Hello and welcome back. My name is Kristen. I am here with Learn English at Be Global and today we are going to talk about pricing and negotiation. So pricing is literally how much does something cost and to negotiate effectively negotiating is a way of making a deal or making a business deal or just kind of talking to somebody about making sure that you get what you need out of the situation and helping them get what they need as well. We call that a negotiation. When two people or two parties or two businesses get together and discuss the details of some sort of deal or something that's being bought or sold or something of value that they have that they want to discuss different terms with and talk about coming to a single solution that will work for both parties. So first let's talk about pricing. As I said before, the price is how much something is worth, how much it costs. So the first thing you have to ask is how much is it? And in the United States, our dollars are broken down into We have one dollar bills, five dollar bills, ten dollar bills, twenty dollar bills, fifty dollar bills, and for today we're going to stop at one hundred dollar bills. So we have a single bill that is worth one dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, $20, $50, and $100. So that means in that one little piece of paper, you actually have a value of $100. So when we're talking about how much something costs and what the price is, oftentimes we add decimal points for the cents. And a cent is any of the coins that we have that is not paper. So they're either silver or gold, depending on what type of a cent it is. We have a single cent. We have a five cent, which is also called a nickel. Our single cent is called a penny. We have a 10 cent, which is called a dime. And then we're going to stop today at our 25 cent piece, which we call a quarter. These are the main items used when it comes to pricing and paying for something using cash. Now, if you use your card, the numbers are gonna be the same, but you won't have to worry about figuring out what the currency is or what the dollars and the cents are when you're taking it out of your purse or your wallet because you can just swipe your credit card and it will take care of it for you. So if we want to put together the dollars and the cents, let's think of an item. So let's say when we talked about shopping before and I wanted to buy a sweater, let's say that that sweater, that item of clothing is $35.28. We would write that like this, 35, 28. That means $35 and 28 cents. So if I were to give them cash out of my purse to pay for this sweater, I could give them 120, 110, and one $5 bill that would take care of my $35. And then for my 28 cents, I could give them one quarter, which would be 25 cents, and then three pennies, which would then equal the 28. So when someone asks, how much is it? How much does this cost? Most likely, they end up taking out the dollars and the cents, and they will just say 35.28. 35.28 means $35.28. As we get into bigger numbers, let's add, let's say that this was $235.28. Then you would hear 
235.28 instead of $200 $235.28. They'll just say $235.28. And they'll regularly say it very quickly like that. So if you don't understand them, and I know what it's like to be in another country and not quite understand what words they're using when they use the numbers, because people speak so quickly, especially when you're first learning a language. So just ask them to write it down. Can you please write down the cost? You can say, can you please write down the cost? Or simply, can you write the numbers? They'll understand and then they'll write it down for you so that you can see it more clearly. So that's a breakdown of pricing in the general numbers that we'll use on a more day-to-day -day basis. As we get into much larger numbers, it's a much different thing, but that will be a whole nother lesson. <laughs> so for today, that gives you the pricing. How much is it is something, what is it worth? What is the value in dollars? and cents. And someone might say, let's go for this example. If, let's say that this 28 cents was not here and it was only $35, they may say 35 even. When you add even after the total, that means there's no additional cents. There's no change or no coins needed. It's only the 35. So then they would say 35 even or 235 even. And that means there's zero coins needed for that transaction. So let's move over now into negotiating. So we're just going to kind of talk through a situation of negotiation. So let's say that I bought something at the store and I realized I don't need it anymore. So I looked at the return policy. They said that I can bring it back within 14 days for a store credit or a refund. Unfortunately, I missed the 14th day. So it is now the 15th day. So I'm going one day late and I'm going to see if I can negotiate getting my money back for that sweater that I bought that was $35. I spent $35 on the sweater. Now the sweater is on sale. So it's worth less. It has less value now than it did when I purchased it. So I'm going to go into the store and see if there's anything I can negotiate to try to get my money back. I'm hoping for a win-win situation. A win-win situation is when both people have won. They are both happy with the results. I get what I want, they get what they want. So in my ideal win-win situation, the store is going to want to give me my money back, even though I'm a little bit late, and even though the sweater is on sale, because they want to keep me as a customer. I'm hoping that this will be a win-win situation for both of us. If we both win, that is considered the best of both worlds. That means I got what I want and they got what they wanted in the negotiation. We always hope for the best of both worlds, even though we don't always get it. So I'm ready to go to the store and I'm ready to get the ball rolling on this negotiation. Get the ball rolling. That means literally if you think of a ball rolling and how it moves forward, that will help you remember that get the ball rolling means let's do this. Let's get this started. Let's start this negotiation. Let's meet and let's figure this out. Let's get the ball rolling. So I walk into the store and I ask to speak to the manager. 
And I know that the first conversation that we have in our negotiation is going to find out what each of us is bringing to the table. Bringing to the table simply means, what do you have to offer me for this negotiation, for this agreement or this deal that you want to make? What are you offering me? I know I have to offer you this great sweater. It's in very good condition. I have not touched it since I purchased it. I did not wear it. It is practically brand new. And you're now trying to get rid of them so they're on sale. But I'm hoping that you will want one more to add back into your store. And I plan on coming back to shop for my presents, for my friends, for their birthdays at the same store. So that's what I'm bringing to the table. And then we're just gonna have to see what the manager brings to the table. When I go to speak to him, I realize that he at first is a little bit upset that I'm a day late. I should have returned it within the 14 days. And I told him, I was very apologetic. I said, I'm sorry. A lot of times when you start negotiating, you're going to use these three phrases here. And you might start by saying, I realize if I had brought the item back on time, then we wouldn't have to negotiate. It was in the return policy for me to get my money back if I came within 14 days, and I didn't. So he then said, as long as the sweater is in perfect condition, we can sell it again. So that's good news for me. So we say, as long as, and as long as, you could, you could use that for almost anything you need to when you're negotiating. As long as I can leave early from work, I will come back tomorrow morning on time. As long as we can get the deal that we need, we'll be able to provide the money for the institution. And with unless, a lot of times what they might say is, unless you're willing to take the discount on the sweater for what it is worth right now, I will not be able to help you. So the manager could say that. I could say to him, Unless you are going to give me back my full refund for the sweater, I will not shop here again. Those are all bargaining tools that you can use when negotiating. Now, I already knew. I loved this sweater, but I was late in returning it, and I understand that. So I don't expect him to bend over backwards for me. Bend over backwards means you're going to go above and beyond and do everything you possibly can to make the situation work for the other person. So I know that when I want to make someone really happy, I'll bend over backwards to do whatever I can. And bending over backwards, if you think about it literally, is very difficult. If you have to bend over backwards, you're working really hard to try and do something. So that's a way of saying, I'm going to do everything I can. So if it's something that you really want in a negotiation, you can say, I will bend over backwards for you if we can make this happen. Now, I wasn't willing to bend over backwards. I didn't expect him to bend over backwards, but he was kind of driving a hard bargain. It was hard for me to understand that I would have to lose money based on the money that I spent for this sweater. So driving a hard bargain, when someone drives a hard bargain, that means that he's not gonna give me exactly what I want, not right away. And so I realize I might be losing money. If I don't get my full $35 that I spent on that sweater, and I don't have the sweater, then I've lost money. There's money that I spent that I can't get back. And if that were to happen, that's partially my fault because I was late in returning the sweater. However, I'm hoping after, we, after he drives his hard bargain that he would be willing to meet me halfway. If he meets halfway, that way I offer something to him and he offers something to me. I'm hoping that maybe 
he'll be willing to give me my money back. If I, let's say, agree to come in and go shopping the next weekend. So he says to me, I'm sorry, but because this is after the refund deadline and because the sweater is on sale now, I can only give you back the money that you have based on the sale. I can't give you the full $35. And I may say to him at that point, is that your best offer? That's my way of trying to figure out, is this the best offer you're going to give me? Is it possible to get more money back? Is it possible that we can work out a different solution? So I would say to him, is that your best offer? And he comes back to me and says, well, I think we can figure some, something out. I think we can figure it out. Figure it out means let's find a way so that we are both happy. Because I think we can come to a solution that will make both of us happy if we figure it out. Let's figure it out. Let's figure something out so we can make this work. He wants to have a happy customer and I want to get my money back. So what he ends up telling me is this. After we have gone through this negotiation, he says, how about this? I will give you a store credit for the full amount that you paid on the sweater, which is $35. And a store credit means that there's a credit at the store that I can use to purchase anything at the store. So I don't get my cash back. I won't get my dollars and my cents back to put on my purse and spend at another store. But he will give me the full value that I spent of the $35 since it is a store that I shop at regularly and there might be something else that I would buy since the sweater didn't work for me. I think that that might work, but I wanna give it some thought first. So I'm going to sleep on it. And when I tell him that I'm going to sleep on it, that means I need a day or two to just think it over. I need to get some rest first and maybe when I wake up tomorrow morning, really think about, is this what I want to do or not? So I'm going to sleep on it first. Typically, in a situation like this where you're returning a sweater, you probably wouldn't need to sleep on it. But you use sleep on it a lot in business transactions or especially in negotiations or deals that involve large amounts of money. Sometimes you just need some time to think and you don't want to make your decision right then and there because you want to take every option into consideration first. So then you can say, let me sleep on it and I will get back to you. So I told the manager, I will keep you posted. I will keep you posted means I will let you know. I will keep you posted and tell you what my decision is going to be once I decide. And you can keep me posted if anything changes. If you change your mind, if you decide maybe you will just give me the cash back, which I can hope for. So that takes you through an entire negotiating process using just a few of the sayings that we use here in the United States. There are so many more. And a lot of times people will say things just to get you to make a decision right there in your negotiating. And realize you don't have to. You can take your time and make your decision later. Another thing I want to bring up is I've noticed in a lot of my traveling that there are a lot of small stores that you can go shopping in and you can barter or negotiate. Barter means that you can talk down the price. Now, I will tell you this. In the United States, there are very few stores that will allow for bartering, not like it is in other countries. So bartering is not something that you can do regularly here. You can always ask, is there a lower price? And see what their, what their reaction is. And if they say, oh, maybe, then you may be able to say that you want to spend less. So then you can barter and get the price down lower. Maybe there's a candle for $5. I only want to spend $3 on a candle. 
So I can say, I have $3, will you take $3? And they can say yes or no. If they say, how about $3.50? I can either choose to walk away, or I can take that candle for $3.50. Or try to talk to him even more and negotiate even more to get that price lower. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson today. I hope that you've been able to learn a lot about negotiating and pricing. I look forward to teaching you again. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Put comments down below if you have any questions, and I will see you again very soon. Thank you for joining us here at Learn English with Be Global. Bye.